sororities and fraternities are a specific group, and people within that group are involved in that group, and they don't get out of it. Basically, the sorority arranged social life, except for the parties, is exchanges and beer busts and stuff like that. So you're once again, you're put into this group. You're going out there not as yourself because you're in a sorority and you're going out to be that sorority girl. And so when people ask you what sorority you're in, you're going to say you're this sorority. And they go, oh, you're in that one. You're not a person. You're just a part of a group. I don't like belonging to groups. You're not doing it. You're just having a sign that's already said that you've done it. And I guess going out and trying to impress people because then you're from some certain sorority or you're from a group or you're from, from a fraternity. Actually, you've got yourself in the niche and there's really not much you can do. I found that lots of times that I didn't want to be in a sorority. I, I got sick and tired of looking good, but I felt I still had to. And even if I didn't do it, I was already classified as that type. And that no matter what I did, I'd just be stuck in that group. It's like a school. There are 25,000 people here, but I'm beginning to feel that I'm never going to meet anybody new because I just keep on going around with the same crowd and I've dated people that are in the same group. There's no way you can get out of it. I think that was an orgy. It's something that's very disgusting. It's it should never even, I mean, I hope it's never brought into anything I ever know. Because then you've completely lost all this tiny bit of personal affection. It's just become something that, I mean, that's, that's the real fraternity sorority bit. My first party I ever went to, fraternity party, was a pajama reno. In my first one year. And they had these solid mattresses. They had mattresses built up, and then they had mattresses on the floor. And if you wanted to, you could walk around and see people on every stage of sex, and being a freshman, I didn't even know what half of it was, but I mean, you could see people fornicating left and right, and that's all it was, it was just complete fornication, it wasn't, it wasn't sex, it wasn't even going to bed, it was people that were completely drunk, and I mean, things like this, this is the, the fraternity bit, this is, this is one obnoxious thing about fraternity, it's just good that you don't, well, wouldn't it be great, we'll get five million beds going across, and everybody will fuck everybody else. I mean, this way you really have actual proof to your roommate or to the guy down the hall that you really did get this girl. And, you know, it's sort of like having to prove it in public so everybody will believe you. getting tired of getting beautiful so I can impress another group with my coach. I felt that lots of times that I am compensating for girls that weren't as pretty as I was so I could go over there and stand out and be a pretty girl that stands for my sorority instead of being a pretty girl that stands for myself. I think it's very important that people should be individuals. If you can't be an individual for yourself or look good for yourself, that you have to look good for other people as a member of this group. So therefore, if you're beautiful, then everybody in the sorority must be beautiful, just like if they see one ugly girl from a sorority, they're going to think everybody in the sorority is ugly.
like that. Going down there and back. Okay? <laughs> realizing how meaningless it is. But when guys used to flirt with me and guys used to dance with me and say all these wild things to me, I used to come home and be so jazzed and I'd tell everybody how many guys I danced with and how good looking they were and which ones I met. And now I come home and the same exact things that happened to me as a freshman that are happening to me now as a junior mean absolutely nothing to me and they disgust me. And I think the sorority is a part of growing up. And the beer bus is just another part. You, it's like having too much of something. Or if you have something over and over again that really isn't anything great, you get tired of it because you begin to see into it. You begin to see the phoniness of it. And you start to see how you have to talk to the right people. And the best looking guys in the best houses have to dance with the right girls. And everybody gets tired of talking to the same people. And, I mean, some guys I've, I've been flirting with for three years, and our relationship will never go any farther beyond that. We both realize what the relationship is. But at the beer bust, when we see each other, we realize, well, we're back here again, and we're going to start flirting again, and we know it won't mean anything. But we'll do it again, because that's sort of the set pattern of what happens at a beer bust. And it just, it goes on and on. because you can't know a person because of this sort of fake outside false facade he puts on that he has to impress people with. And I think that's one of the saddest things about the whole system is that people put on facades and people finally break down and get to know each other. It takes a long time and lots of people never really know each other because they've gotten so used to putting on this beer bus facade or this exchange facade that you sort of recognize them as that type of person. This sort of a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde bit and the Mr. Hyde sort of pops out in everybody. And uh, it's the same old bit, you've got to be loud and obnoxious so everybody can notice you. While the quiet guy that stays in the corner, nobody knows. But with the sororities and fraternities, you, you don't have a chance to become yourself really a lot of times because you have to put up this front. And then at times when you want to be yourself, you're afraid to because people aren't going to understand that person that you've become.
set up so many exchanges, spread maybe three exchanges for each semester with, with fraternities, and half the times they can't even stand the fraternities, but they have to have the exchanges so that they can be over on the row with the rest of them and so they can say they're having an exchange tonight. It isn't as if we were all a bunch of friends and we could all just get together and be together at one time. And lots of times, three-fourths of the girls in the house can't stand the guys they're having the exchange with. And by the time the night of the stupid thing, everybody is trying to think of ways to get out of it. People get sick, people have midterms, people do anything so they don't have to go. And the funny thing is that they get over there, they can't stand to go. And at about 8.30, you can leave your exchange, but very few of them come home early. You have a feeling that if you go home, you might miss that certain somebody that you've been spending three years searching for. Or something may happen. I think people would rather stay in exchange and be bored than go home and be alone. I think. A lot of people in sororities and fraternities are afraid to be alone. There's always somebody around. You're never alone. And I think the same bit about joining the group. To be alone, I think, takes a lot more than being with people, even if you're putting on a false front when you're with people. And maybe they're not even looking for someone, but they're afraid to go home and just sit by themselves and maybe think, and maybe think about what they're doing and how far they're getting and why they're getting nowhere.